All right, a new video, how to read a chest x-ray, a five minute crash course. Thank you to Katarina Zorchich for making these slides. And here we go. The uh, mnemonic uh, that I kind of made up, but I find this very helpful is crafty. You wanna use the same approach each time you read a chest x-ray. The C starts for confirm the right date and the right patient. The number of times I've been looking at a chest x-ray and realizing, oh, wrong date, this is not today's date, or potentially wrong patient, I have the wrong chart in front of me. Uh, next up, I find it's helpful to rule out life-threatening pathology, and there's three in particular you really don't want to miss, and we'll talk about those briefly. Next is assessing the quality of the film. There's a couple key steps involved in that which we'll bring to life. Are there any obvious fractures? And then the approach I take is going from the trachea and working outwards. Other people go work outwards and go in. You do you, but make sure to be consistent. And then most important, find yesterday's chest x-ray. Um, said differently, find an old chest x-ray and compare what you're seeing today to a past x-ray that's available. So as mentioned, ruling out um, three important life-threatening pathology. So here are some examples here. The arrow sign will show you there is air under the diaphragm. Uh, that suggests that somebody's potentially perforated their bowel. Uh, a markedly widened mediastinum. Um, this can suggest an aortic dissection. And then here, a very large pneumothorax. Usually um, pneumothoraces are not this obvious, but you can see it's all black and you can't see any lung markings whatsoever. Um, next in the mnemonic is uh, assessing the quality of the film, and we have this one here in front of us as a sample one. Uh, so exposure, you should be able to see the vertebrae through the heart, and you can make out the vertebrae here um, through the heart silhouette. A number of ribs, um, you can pause uh, the slide and count yourself, but trust me, there are six anterior uh, as well as 10 posterior. That means there's been a sufficient inspiration uh, that allows for a high quality film. And then PA is preferred to AP. Um, the short version with PA, this is when the um, x-ray beams are going from the back and then forward. So, you know, in a chest x-ray, somebody's standing up like this and the x-rays are coming from behind. Um, that's ideal. AP, when the x-ray beams go anterior to posterior, are not ideal because of the effect of the heart, which can really overcall cardiomegaly as a result. Um, and then are there any obvious fractures? I find if I don't look for it, I might miss them. So here with the arrow sign, you see a large humeral fracture. Um, this patient here has multiple rib fractures. Um, next up, uh, I find the trachea and then work outwards. So here we see the trachea and we can see its midline because we can see these spines, uh, spinous processes um, behind. Um, here you can see the trachea is clearly um, deviated. Um, um, after I follow the trachea down, then naturally you get to the borders of the heart. Okay, So these are the borders marked out here, and you can also comment on the size of the heart. Uh, so cardiomegaly is when the maximum diameter of the heart is at least 50% of this larger blue line. And you can clearly see here that um, this orange line is going to be less than 50% of this blue line. So probably no cardiomegaly. Um, uh, and then working outwards from there to the lung fields. So here's some pathology, um, vascular redistribution. Um, this can be indicative of um, pulmonary edema, often from congestive heart failure. Uh, curly B lines. When I was a medical student, I thought they were curly. No, no, it's a person's last name is curly. Um, the lines themselves are straight, again, suggesting of uh, pulmonary edema. Um, here's a pretty obvious and large uh, pleural effusion here, uh, and probably even a small pleural effusion there as well. Um, when there's no plur a pleural effusion, the um, borders are very sharp, but here you can see, you can't even see um, the lower zone of the uh, left lung. Uh, consolidation, so the arrow sign helps you, um, but we can see that the border of the heart is obscured, probably because there's a consolidation. Maybe it's from a pneumonia. And then cardiomegaly, so here we can see that the maximum diameter of the heart is clearly more than 50% of the size of the space um, across the two lungs. So to recap, we use the uh, CRAFTY acronym, uh, confirming 
right date and right patient. Uh, next up, rule out life-threatening pathology. Uh, assessing the quality of the film. Are there fractures present? Uh, finding the trachea and then working outwards and then looking for yesterday's chest x-ray and compare to prior. Um, hope you found that helpful. Uh, in the comments below, or in the description below, I should say, um, two resources. One is a newsletter called Trial Files. I'm free to subscribe to. Keeps you up to date on results from randomized trials. And then I wrote a book of one-pagers. So for anyone who's interested in internal medicine, you might find that helpful. And a portion of proceeds go to um, Epilepsy Toronto. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Have a great day.